You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. It's time for us to stand together in goodness to revolt against the evil. Welcome to the Inner Peace Movement with your host, Gloria Cliffords. Let Gloria help you explore the techniques to resolve stressful issues in your life in order to preserve personal growth and happiness. Release negatives using methods that are tried and true. So please welcome the host of the Inner Peace Movement, Gloria Cliffords. Hello, everybody, and happy and hopefully very healthy Friday. You are listening to the Inner Peace Revolution. If you're not part of the revolution yet, please join us. I am your host, Gloria Clifford. You're listening live on BBM Global Network, iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, Spotify, and... I just recently found out about CastBox. So, thank you for joining us. Um, I did say healthy again, and I hope that you are healthy. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, First, I want to say, for those of you who have lost someone, I do send my condolences. And shortly, we'll be talking about the stages that we have to go through of loss and grief because we've all lost something here. But I thought it was very interesting that in this week people celebrated Passover and Sunday is Easter. And thinking about Passover, this too shall pass. We will get over that, over what's going on, and things will return to normal or even better than normal. And Easter, it's a time of new beginnings. So this is a great opportunity as well as a challenge, and I hope you're looking at the positive side of this. Uh, Today, I did listen for a little while to the L.A. County news about coronavirus. And they said they 85% of the people tested were negative. Actually, I'm sorry, that's not what they said. They said 15% of the people tested were positive. So that means 85% were negative. That's the way we need to think about this. They'll just give us bad news on the news. Another, uh, I checked this out, and we have 10 million people just in California, in Southern California, and there were 241 deaths. Of course, you know, they don't say out of 10 million people, but it's 241. It's very few. And a lot of them had existing conditions that really opened them up to getting more sick with the coronavirus. It's very sad. But we have to look at the positive side. 85%. 85% tested negative. That's great. So think about it. And yes, numbers will go up and they will change as more and more people get tested. But uh, 
it seems like things are getting better. And of course, that's on a case by case basis. A lot of it depends on how you look at it. I do want to give shout outs first to everyone out there who is taking care of people, no matter what, you know, I don't care what you're doing. If you are out there helping people working in a market or a hospital or wherever, shout out to you. You're very brave and we all need to appreciate them. And a few people <laughs> I want to mention specifically, Dr. Shelley Stockwell, who gave me one idea in this past week that has been very helpful. Um, I hope I'm saying this correctly. Anisia Rao from India, who told me about how she's volunteering to help people with their emotional needs through hypnotherapy. And Pierre Benoit, who's from Montreal, and he will be with us very shortly. So you'll get to meet him and get his focus on what everything is happening now. Uh, I want to say uh, also although I hate to go to the negative, there are a few people out there who are not following the rules. They're not staying home. They're not keeping a distance. They're not wearing masks. I don't know if they're just ignorant or they don't care. Even worse, this week, I saw people who were spitting at, at others spitting on produce in the market, licking a door handle. Uh, what's wrong with these people? And I want to urge you, if you see something like this, you need to say something, the same old expression. See something, say something. Unless you feel it would be dangerous. I would call the police. I would throw them in jail, personally, if I had that power. Uh... It's so sad because this is a time we have to really love and care for each other. And we've had times like this in the past, and we've gotten through them, and we will get through this too. However, I want to just tell you a very short story because it's a true story uh, that happened to me, but it leads into what we're going to talk about in a little while, the five stages of loss and grief. My father died. I was in my early 20s. Uh, he was just 50 years old. And it was a shock because although he knew he was ill, <laughs> he never told anybody. Uh, but so we were all in shock which is very common at first. I remember walking around my apartment just saying, no, 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 no. After I heard about it, I can't even tell you how long I said it, but I can tell you I just kept saying, no, 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 until his friends showed up to take me to my mom's house. I did not have a car at that time. I was living in New York. That was quite a while. Uh, I was just saying that. I was in total denial. After that, I kind of went into depression. Uh, now, I want to say there are various stages of loss and grief, and they come in different orders. It depends on the people. I went into depression because I was a depressed person from the time I was born. And I learned more about being depressed from my mom. And I barely spoke to anyone. Uh, we had to, of course, make funeral arrangements. I was very angry. I was angry with everyone. Uh, my, my dad was a Marine. Uh, and I was just angry, 
with the Marine Corps, with God, with everyone that this had happened. Then I got to a place of acceptance. And this is very common to what a lot of you are going through with now. And we're going to be back in just a couple of minutes with our guest today, Pierre Benoit. And we're going to get his take on this. And we're going to talk about these different stages and what he thinks about the coronavirus. So hang in there. And we will be back in a very short time. And in the meantime, please think about this. Where are you as far as your emotions are? Are you denying it? A lot of people do. Are you angry? Are you depressed? Are you accepting it and following the rules? Uh, I hope so, but we'll talk about that in just a few seconds when we come back. Again, you're listening to The Inner Peace Revolution. I am your host, Gloria Cliffords. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. On the BBM Global Network, as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. And hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inner Peace Revolution. I am your host, Gloria Cliffords, and I want to give you a very brief introduction to our guest today, Pierre Benoit. And usually when I ask someone to be on the show, it's either someone I know or I search for people. I interview people before I have them on the show. But with Pierre, it was very different. Um, If you've been listening, you know I've been building lists of people who can help with emotional problems. But Pierre already had a recording about this, which I listened to. It was the hypnotic report. Recording and I've been in hypnosis more times than I could ever count, but it was an excellent recording and it's free for anyone who needs it. So, because of his kindness and generosity, I asked him to come to the show. So, Pierre. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm great. How are you doing? Very much. Very good. So, uh, we know you're a hypnotherapist, but can you tell us a little about yourself and how you got to that place? 
Uh, yeah, I'm a, what we call, well, I'm a registered counseling clinical hypnotherapist, and I've been for the last 15 years. I have my own hypnotherapy clinic, hypnotherapy and counseling clinic. And before that, I was a child and family counselor for about 20 years. So I've been kind of in, in the helping type of uh, profession since, uh, I believe, 1977. So wow. Been, uh, so it's been a while. I'm also That's... the author of the book, on, which is uh, PTSD and Hypnosis, A Bulletproof Vest for the Mind, which basically uh, focuses more on uh, PTSD and people living through different traumas. And, you know, it's like it's quite appropriate nowadays because everybody's going through a, a, a very specific trauma with this virus going around. Yes, and everybody thinks as the military, you know, people coming back with PTSD. But whenever we have a trauma in our lives, no matter what it is, uh, we have PTSD in some form uh, to some extent, depending on who we are and our background and what happened to us. So, Pierre, uh, we were talking... Yes, go ahead. No, go ahead. We were talking. <laughs> Earlier, I think you heard in the introduction about the stages of loss and grief. Now, before we go into the stages, um, what if somebody did not have a person who passed on because of the virus or any other reason? Did they also suffer? Definitely, because, you know, when we talk about grief and loss, when we talk about a loss, it's not always about somebody that died. Or it's, it could be any type of losses. It could be the loss of a job, the loss of uh, our liberty. Uh, you know, it's like losing, uh, you know, it's like our family because of divorce. So there's all types of different types of losses out there. And all these losses, you know, the, those stages of grief and loss will apply to all of these types of losses. Yes, and uh, I know for me, uh, although I can talk to people on FaceTime, you know, I can see them, but especially with my grandchildren, uh, we communicate on FaceTime, and I love seeing them, and they're so cute, and I love hearing them. But what I really want to do is hug them and kiss them. So, there, the, you know, physical attention is a human need. And I think... It's one of the basic needs. Yes, it is a yeah, basic need. It's one of the basic needs. And these days, uh, we're not supposed to do that. So, uh, do you have any any kind of solution or advice about what we can do instead? Well, at this point in time, uh, that's going to be like uh, changing in, in the next little while. Um, although if we, if we look at Maslow's pyramid, it's one of the physical needs, which is what at the base of the is pyramid. Uh, people need to feel that they're connected. But right now, with the coronavirus, uh, this types of this type of vision is is changing to a point where we have to have a social distancing and so on, and even our communication, like you mentioned, you know, it's like through FaceTime or Facebook or any type of online type of communication we do have some type of relationship but the physical touch that used to be there cannot be there at this point in time and i believe that it won't be there for a while because until you know that virus is really kind of you know dealt with uh just to keep people safe mm -hmm. so this is a type this is a type of loss where yeah you know it's like uh the the Missing physical contact between two people uh, is it will affect people to a point, and the stages will. You know, it's like if we look at the stages of grief and loss. You know, it's like the first one is denial and, and isolation. You know, it's like, well, you know, denial is like, well, you know, it's like 
it'd be like saying, uh, I don't really, you know, it's like, it won't happen to me kind of thing. You know, it's like yes. this is my family, this, you know, you know, it's like, so, you know, and, and if, you know, it's like once we, you get through that, you know, once you get through that, you know, then you, you, you can get people get angry, get irritated because, you know, they, it's like, well, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Right. Yes. And so we're going to go know, on. It, it, they will kind of move on. We're yeah. going to move on to the rest of these. Um, as in the introduction, I walked around saying, no, 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 no. Total disbelief and denial. And a lot of people are doing that right now. Um, hmm. You are listening to the Inner Peace Revolution live, coming to you on wherever you're listening. <laughs> I'm your host, Gloria Cliffords, and I want to talk a little bit about inner child, because I've been doing that with a lot of my clients this week. Uh, it helps them because they're giving them self-love <laughs> and hugging themselves, uh, which I've been doing, too. So we will be back very shortly with our guest, Pierre, and we're going to continue with these signs of grief and loss. You need to know about them. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and to Tune in radio. And welcome back, everyone, to the Inner Peace Revolution. I am your host, Gloria Clifford. Happy to have our guest today, Pierre Benoit. And we are now talking about the five stages of loss and grief. Um, one thing we just spoke about was the physical contact, uh, which I really miss, especially with my grandkids. Uh, and I'm a pretty physical person, but um, what I've been doing with a couple of my clients who feel the same way as I do is uh, we are going back to when they were children because no matter what you think, our childhoods do affect us. And I asked them, if you were your parent, what, what would you like to have them say to you? And they say it to themselves while they hug themselves and give themselves love. I'm doing that right now. <laughs> I hug myself <laughs> throughout the day. <laughs> and that might be helpful for you. Uh, it might be challenging, but it might be very helpful. Uh, so 
now again, uh, these stages of loss and grief, uh, they don't go in any special order. Different people experience these things in different ways. So uh, the next one I have written down after denial is anger, which I definitely experienced. (laughs) So, Pierre, can you tell us about anger? Well, when we when people move from denial to anger, basically people uh, the anger will be uh, it, it kind of gives you an illusion that you can do something about it, an illusion of uh, being able to do something about it. Um, you know, it's like so people will you know will be irritable. Uh, you know, it's like they they won't. Uh, it's like they they. When they when they're angry, they they have the illusion that they're in control. So and again, it's only an illusion because if we look at uh, physical touch again, it's like yeah, you know, it's like uh, one of the thoughts that might come up is, well, you know, you can't tell me what to do and what not to do. You know, mm-hmm. it's like people get into more of this type of uh, mental or more mindset, and uh, they get very resistant. And, and, yes. And, 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 Go on. And, and that's it, you know. Yeah. So it could, and and sometimes the anger is directed towards, you know, it's like specific people, and sometimes or specific situations. But usually, uh, the anger will not, you know, will be just kind of overwhelming at a point in time. If yes, not dealt we- with properly. We are out of control when we're angry. I mean, people get violent, unfortunately. Although crime has gone down in general, uh, there's still a lot of domestic violence going on right now. And it's all out of anger. Whether the anger should be there or not, it is there. And a lot of people mm-hmm. can't control it. Don't and and the violence may not necessarily always be physical. It could be verbal, you know, it's like uh, people get more uh, nippy with each other. They will say yes. things that they don't really think, but they'll just kind of, you know, so they, they're more irritable, more of a, they have more of a short fuse, and w- which ends up into like more of a verbal type of anger directed towards people that mm-hmm. you know, have nothing to do about it. You know? What would you suggest to a client who comes to you and says, you know, uh, my wife, my husband, he's just been yelling at me and saying these awful things, and I'm getting really upset. Do you have a suggestion? Well, a couple of things. You know, it's like we can't change somebody else because we don't have any power. But what we, uh-huh. what people can do is talk about their feelings rather than telling the other one what to do is, is more saying something of like, well, you know, right now what you're saying it really hurts me. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about how they feel, how they receive whatever is there. And sometimes by doing that, unless the person is actually wanting to hurt you, it's like the, it, it'll kind of make them step back. It's like, well, it's true. Maybe I'm kind of overstepping my bounds here. You know, so, yes. But if you tell people what to do, usually what that will do is simply get them more angry. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's true. Um, I was very angry, as I said earlier, about my father's death. Uh, Now, the next thing I have here is bargaining. And for me, that was a very short stage, but I did go through it. And bargaining is like, God, please don't let this be true. I will do anything. Just tell me what to do to make this not be mm-hmm. so. And it seems like it's a part of denial. Do you have anything to say about that bargaining part? Well, uh, I find that the best way to define the bargaining stage is the, I call it the if only stage. Yes. If, if only I was more careful, things would, would have been different. If only I would have said that or I would have done that. Oh. And the bargaining, you know, it, it kind of brings up a lot of guilt within people. 
because mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. they have a tendency of turning things against themselves. Right. So if if they could if I if I had been a better person to that you know or a better husband or a better wife or or a better child you know things would have been different. Not necessarily, but in the mind, whatever you tell your subconscious mind, well, the subconscious mind believes. So yes. it will create and it will react as if it's it's true because it yes. believes everything that you put in. So. So yes, it's, the only it's in- stage really brings up a lot of of guilt within you, within, within people. Yes, I understand that because I had a lot of guilt uh, <laughs> at that time. Um, there are other stages that are necessary to go through. We you don't realize it, but I like the way you said as if because. Or if, if I only, if I only, what about if the world was really healthy and well, instead of the world is so horrible right now? I mean, it really has to do a lot with our thinking. And I know it took me a a long time to become a positive thinker. Um, We will be back in just a little while uh, to continue with these stages of loss and grief. Uh, I am your host, Gloria Cliffords. We're here today with Pierre Benoit, and you are listening to the Inner Peace Revolution. Please join the revolution, (laughs) and we will be back shortly. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it mike zorick a three-time california state champion in greco roman wrestling at 114 pounds mike blind since birth was born in hartford connecticut he was a six-time national placer including two seconds two-thirds and two-fourths he also won the veterans folk style wrestling twice at 152 pounds in all these tournaments he was the only blind competitor Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. And we're back. <laughs> Again, this is the Inner Peace Revolution. I'm your host, Gloria Cliffords, and we're here today with Pierre Benoit. And we are talking about the stages of grief and loss. And we just finished talking about bargaining. Uh, the next one I have written down. Now, remember, these can happen in any order, but we really need to go through them. Uh, when we feel we're in loss of something that was important to us. So the next one I have down is depression. I know a lot of people who are there right now. Uh, so what do you have to say about that, Pierre? Well, the depression, uh, you know, it's like the emotions that predominate uh, this stage is basically sadness and regret. It's yes. like it's settling in, uh, you know, seeing the reality of what's happening and how it affects us. And it's like 
instead of being def- or, or kind of fighting against it, it, it's kind of coming into us. And people be, start being sad and regret. And, you know, it's like, and there's a lot of worrying. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, it's like, and, and this stage is, at this stage, people really need a lot of uh, what we call clarification of the situation and reassurance. Yes. Right? Which will help through this depression uh, stage. It will help. You know, the tough part is, I think, with depression, even more than others, but I think it exists with others, we do not even realize we are depressed. It takes a while for us to realize, and I always recommend, uh, if you're feeling really sad or depressed, check out your body language. And change it. If you're sad, we have our our heads down. We might be crossing our arms, crossing our legs, almost folded up. So you see that and say, oh, (laughs) I must be depressed. So you change your body language and stand up and stretch and breathe. And that will sort of begin the healing do you have yeah, other suggestions? When pe- yeah, go on. When people change their physical state or their, their physiology, uh, it will help change uh, their mental state. Uh, because depression, when people are depressed, they do adopt a, a very uh, forward, inside, kind of folded within yes. himself or herself. And, and if they kind of just get their shoulders back, head up straight, even put a, kind of try to put a smile. It's very hard to stay depressed when you're smiling. Even oh, if yes. Smile. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, and, and you know, it so becomes it, a real smile. <laughs> even if you're faking yeah. it, it becomes a real smile afterwards. Yeah. So. Well, well, the thing is, is by straightening up, you're, you're bringing your focus outwards rather than inwards. Uh-huh. Right. So it, it kind of, you know, so it kind of and if you're bringing it outwards, then you, you're kind of getting more into the reality of things and how the environment affects you or, and how you affect the environment. And then and that's where you have more power, because if you kind of stay folded on yourself, it's like uh, pulling yourself down, uh, you know, kind of a kind of a downward spiral and just kind of allowing yourself to, to follow that downward spiral. As soon as you kind of straighten up, it, it's like it cuts the spiral and it kind of changes the mindset. Isn't it? It's so amazing. Yeah, people yeah, don't realize the connection shorter. between mind and body right. uh, until you realize it or know about it, right? Mm-hmm. And they, you know, whatever the psychological cannot solve will get thrown into the biology. Right, so if oh, yes. uh, the person stays depressed too long and so on, then yeah, they'll start kind of uh, getting like low energy. Uh, it, it will affect them physically. Yes, and Not a lot mentally. of people get very ill, and it's because of their their thinking and their emotions, and they don't know how to get out of it. So an easy way to do it is just. Change your body language. Stand up and stretch. Um, yeah. You know, I've been using this time uh, to study. You know, other people, there, there's no end to learning about the mind. And I was listening to someone yesterday, and she said, do this exercise. And if you're at home, you should try it. Just roll yourself up into a ball. And... As if you were really depressed, how would you be? And just tell yourself, I'm so happy. (laughs) I'm so happy. I doubt that that will work. So everyone just stand up, stretch, and take a deep breath, feel better, and try telling yourself, I'm so depressed. (laughs) You won't be. It's going to be a real challenge to feel depressed once you do that. 
it's really awesome, you know, and it's natural. People don't understand. Little kids, babies know how to do this naturally. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, 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 yeah go it, on. It, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's within us. That it's an ability that we, we have, which is innate. Yes. Sometimes, you know, it's like when we think, you know, the thinking part of ourselves, a lot of times will kind of hinder our ability to naturally get well. Yes. Yes. I think almost always. You're absolutely right, Pierre. Um, we're going to continue this conversation with Pierre. And we're going to go into the next stage, which I have written down as acceptance. And sometimes people think they just accepted it right away. Uh, and maybe if someone's really ill and you expect them to go, maybe that could be true. However, a lot of them, they have to go back and go through everything they may not have noticed in these stages of grief. So we will be back and we'll be talking about acceptance with Pierre. You are listening to the Inner Peace Revolution, and I am your host, Gloria Cliffords. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. Welcome back. You're listening to the Inner Peace Revolution. I'm your host, Gloria Cliffords, and we're going to get a little lighter now <laughs> because the next, excuse me, next step is acceptance. We finally accept the loss, and that's important to do before we can get back to normalcy. So what do you have to say about acceptance? Anything people should look for or people should do to help us with that stage? Well, uh, when we get to the acceptance stage, it's, this is a stage that's kind of marked by calm. Uh, there's the reality that's set in, uh, all the emotional roller coaster you've been through it, mm. and it's like it's – it's not. It's like a withdrawal, but not not in a negative way. You know, it's like it's just accepting the situation for what it is, knowing that life goes on, things will be okay. Yes. I am okay, and yes, I will miss that person or this situation or, however, it's I'm turning the page, and writing a new chapter. So you know, yes. it, it's it, it's. It's marked by a calm period where people move on. 
Yes, and I'm hoping uh, that most of us are now in acceptance. Uh, I'm pretty sure I am. (laughs) Some of you may not yet quite be there. In L.A., we just heard that all of this social distancing is going to continue through May 15th, at least, because really nobody knows when it's going to end. We haven't faced this before. Uh, For the most part, I think we're doing pretty well. So, yeah, we just have to accept it. And we will get to that. And once we go through the other stages, or not, maybe you go through a couple. Everybody's different. So, Mm -hmm. now, uh, I was reading just today... The next stage, which usually they only say there are five stages, but now they're getting much better, (laughs) is the rebuilding stage, where things go back to normal, or even better, if we're lucky. So what do you think about that, Pierre? Well, the the rebuilding stage really got kind of, that's where people start uh, taking action. Uh, they have they feel that they have power. I don't believe that things will go back to what they, it, it was before. Mm-hmm. There will be changes in the ways of people will deal with each other and so on, especially in the first I think in the first year or so year and a half where people you know it's like we'll need to be careful still uh, but there will be some changes happening both on a personal basis and even on a business basis. Yes. You know, it's like people, you know, are changing their ways to do different things differently where before they kind of sat comfortably on whether, where they were now it, it changed things and people needed to adapt and they will bring, I, I believe that they will bring this adaptation into the, the, the rebuilding phase. You know, so that they can move on without kind of falling back into what it was before, so that they get better. They can be better than what they were before. Yes, I agree. And the the moment we start doing something, the better we feel, because that hopelessness and helplessness goes away. So, uh, just think, I really agree with you. Um, about relationships between people. I'm still going to hug my grandkids once I can get get close enough to do that. Uh, but I've said this before I, to you, Pierre, and on the show, I need to do things, learn new things, so that because society is going to change, business is going to change, I need to pick up my computer skills. I need to figure out how to do the video on Skype (laughs) so I can move on even with my teaching if I decide everything we do as hypnotherapists is teaching. And, uh, yeah, so I will be prepared for when this is over. And action is better than words, as they say. So, Pierre. Um, I really, time has flown by. (laughs) I'm going to ask you if you can just do like a three minute meditation (laughs) for us. Uh, maybe just begin with breathing. Would you like to do that or should I go ahead? Everybody. I I can do it. Okay. Let's go. So, So, all right. So everybody just kind of get comfortable. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale slowly, just allow your eyes to close and allow your body get to get comfortable on the surface or on the surface where it is. And you know that at any time, you, if you need to readjust yourself, you can do so, and it won't affect in any way the relaxation that you'll allow yourself to go into in the next few seconds. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale slowly, just allow your body to completely relax. It's as if a nice, gentle breeze of relaxation 
swept over your body, relaxing every muscle, every tendon, every ligament. And as you do, just allow all the worries, all the tensions, all the anxieties to simply flow from your body down to your feet, down to the earth. Mm -hmm. Just leaving within your body a relaxed state of possibilities and opportunities. I love that. Just allow your eyes to open and just come back to us. Okay, I love that. Thank you so much, Pierre. And as I always do, just in case, one, two, three, four, five, it's great to be alive, and it is. <laughs> and we need to focus at, <laughs> on that more than ever. And everyone should be awake now. Uh, you may want to get up and stretch. Uh, it is just incredible. But, you know, the more you do it, like <laughs> Pierre barely had to speak and I was gone. <laughs> you know, the more you do it, the better you get at relaxing, which is so good for your body, mind, and spirit. So we will be back. I, I encourage you to get a pen and some paper so you can write down uh Pierre's information, if you'd like to get in touch with him or listen to his free tape. <laughs> and again, you're listening to the Inner Peace Revolution. I hope this is bringing you inner peace. I am Gloria Clifford, your host, and hang in there. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story, is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. French Rastafarian baker chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. And we're back, everyone. I hope you have a pen and paper ready because Pierre 
Benoit is now about to give us information if you would like to contact him. So go ahead, please, Pierre. All right. So you can get a free anti-anxiety recording at www.hypnotherapymontreal, one word, dot com, front slash stress dash and dash anxiety dash special. So if you go over there, you can have, you can download this free anti-anxiety recording. If you want to reach me, you can reach me at hypnoaid, H-Y-P-N-O-A-I-D-E at gmail.com. So H-Y-P-N-O-A-I-D-E at gmail.com. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm so happy you came. Um, I want to end just with this uh, quote. I don't know who said it, but I think it's beautiful. And it is, just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, she became a butterfly. And I hope... You will all be just like that caterpillar. <laughs> Don't give up. It's not over. Become a butterfly. Spread your wings. If you want to reach me, you can just go to Gloria Clifford's at gmail.com or you can call me at 818-818-5040 and I'll be there with you, and I do recommend you listen to Pierre's recording. It's really excellent. Uh, Listen again and again (laughs) if you're awake. (laughs) So thanks again for listening. Thank you, Pierre, for being on the show. And everyone, become a butterfly. This is the Inner Peace Revolution, and I am Gloria Cliffords, and we will see you next week. This has been the Inner Peace Movement with host Gloria Cliffords. Gloria says by working together, we can overcome evil and replace it with good in the world. Please join us each week for Gloria Clifford's The Inner Peace Movement. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.